Okay, let's get started. Thank you so much. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Ryan Dugan, and I'm part of the Villanova College International Team. Thank you so much for joining tonight. Um, I work closely with international students interested in studying here in Ontario, Canada. I will provide my contact information at the end of this presentation if you would like to set up a time to learn more about the school. We have an amazing panel discussion tonight with five of our student ambassadors from Villanova College. Each student is highly talented in many different areas, high achievers in academics, and extremely involved within the school community. They are the perfect group of students to represent the many amazing aspects of Villanova College. You will get a chance to hear from each of them regarding their experiences here at the school. So we will be covering many topics from how Villanova College has dealt with COVID-19, the STEM program here at Villanova College, extracurricular activities, student support programs, and Villanova College's school culture. I would like to introduce everyone to the Director of Admissions at Villanova College, Mrs. Jennifer Gray. Good evening. Thank you so very much for joining us. My name is Jennifer Gray and I am the Director of Admissions at Villanova College. So I am located on the school's campus and I work closely with the Americo team. So again, welcome to tonight's event. We are absolutely delighted that you are interested in our school and we truly hope that this evening you will learn more about the school and get excited about putting forth your application. Villanova College is a co-ed Catholic institution located just north of Toronto in Ontario, Canada. Our student population is approximately 540 students from grades four through to 12. This evening, we have wonderful student ambassadors who will assist us with the presentation. They will talk to you about school life, the co-curricular aspects of the school, and all of the wonderful opportunities we offer to our students each and every day. At this time, we will turn things over to Mr. Dugan, who will show us a school video. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to show a video of a virtual tour of Villanova College. Just one moment here. Welcome to Villanova College, a top tier university preparatory high school located just outside the heart of Toronto, Canada. Villanova College is located on a beautiful 53 acre campus. Students have access to the incredible natural resources, including farmland, forest area, and even a private lake with walking trails. Here we are at the main entrance of the school. Villanova College was built in 1999 and has 346 students in grades 9 through 12. The school has a university acceptance rate of 100%, with 98% of graduates accepted into both their top school and top program of choice. Villanova College has a wide range of college prep courses, with over 90 options, including 9 AP courses offering university credit. This is very unusual for a Canadian school. The school also has an incredible one to eight faculty to student ratio. As you can see, Villanova College has spacious, brightly lit academic classrooms with advanced Wi-Fi and even a program where students can bring their own laptops to school. Here we are in the school's fully equipped science labs. Students with a strong interest in STEM can apply for the school's exclusive STEM program that provides students with advanced coursework and hands-on curriculum. We are now entering Villanova College's state-of-the-art athletic facilities. Villanova College has a strong athletics program with championship winning teams and even professional athlete alumni. International students are eligible to join the varsity sports teams from the moment they arrive on campus. The school has a 17,000 square foot triple gymnasium with basketball courts, plus enough bleacher seating for over 400 spectators. Villanova College also has a state-of-the-art fitness center with weight machines, stationary bikes, and more. We are now entering the arts wing. Villanova College offers students a strong arts program with award-winning bands, jazz band, choirs, and an annual musical. 
The school's theater productions are performed at the beautiful, professional Richmond Hill Center for the Performing Arts. The school also offers many fine arts courses, including opportunities for students to work on drawing, painting, sculpting, printmaking, and even multimedia works. Here's the school store where students can pick up Villanova College gear. The school's mascot is the knight. We are now in the Library and Resource Center, where students have access to hundreds of books, as well as spacious, well-lit areas to study and work on group assignments. The school's mathematics, business, computer science, and communications technology departments work closely together to prepare students to excel by providing them with hands-on experience and in-depth knowledge that prepares them to succeed in their high school courses and beyond. Here you can see Villanova College's beautiful, fully lit, regulation-size artificial turf field where the soccer, field hockey, and football teams play. Students interested in swimming or ice hockey also have access to local rinks and pools. At Villanova College, students are immediately welcomed into the close-knit community. Students are each placed with a teacher advisor group where they receive mentorship and guidance alongside their peers from the same teacher throughout their four years at school. Students are also placed into one of four houses, a program based off the British model where they engage in friendly competition and an annual school Olympics each spring. We hope you enjoyed this virtual tour of Villanova College, truly a special school. For more information, please visit www.villanovacollege.org. Okay, thank you. Um, so before we begin and before the students introduce themselves, first of all, I want to thank all of these students. Um, you know, they're taking their time out of their busy schedule. Um, and I really appreciate the time that you guys are taking to really talk about your experience at Villanova College um, in terms of academics, extracurricular activities. So I really, really do appreciate this. And I know that, you know, students that are sitting at home in Mexico or Brazil or Colombia um, really appreciate your insight to the school. Um, so thank you so much. Um, so before, um, you know, we start kind of with a question and answer, um, I would like for each of you to go around and introduce yourselves. Um, you know, you can say your name, what grade you're in, what you're involved in in school, and what you maybe want to study post high school. Hi, everybody, from wherever you are. My name is Akintade Asalu, and I'm in grade 12 currently at Villanova College. I first started at Villanova College when I was in grade five, so this is my eighth year here. And the activities that I've been involved with the most are mostly in athletics and in the arts. So I've been a member of the basketball team every single year, starting with U14 all the way up to senior varsity. I've been a member of the track and field team in grade nine and 11, and I've been a member of both the intermediate stage band and our senior jazz band. And in university, I plan on studying psychology. Hey everyone, I'm Krishma. I am also in grade 12, but I started Villanova in grade nine. So again, kind of similar to AK, I love band. I've been a part of the band since grade nine. Um, we have quite a few bands. We have senior band, jazz band. Um, we even have a new kind of starting drum line this year which I'm really excited about. I play percussion, so that's really exciting. Um, I also in, I'm also kind of involved in like the outreach part of Villanova, which we kind of hold quite high. We love, um, you know, raising awareness or fundraising or just helping out our community. So that's kind of what I love to do at Villanova as well. And for university, I am not really sure. I'm also a part of the STEM program here. so. I'm mostly gonna go into science, I think, but I also applied to business programs just in case. So in June, it's gonna be a hard decision when I have to choose which program I wanna to go to. So that's a little bit about me, thanks. Thank you, Krishma. Hi everyone, my name is Jake Falbo and like AK and Krishma, I'm also in grade 12. 
I started at VC in grade seven, so it's my sixth year here. And similar to what Karishma said, I am also part of the STEM program here at VC, which as you'll find out later is an advanced science, technology, engineering, and mathematics stream. Um, I'm very in involved in the sciences. I've chosen to take all three AP sciences this year, biology, chemistry, and physics. And um, other than that, I've also loved being a part of the bands like AK and Krishma. I'm part of both the senior band, the jazz band, as well as Festival Winds, which is uh, a smaller group of individuals that practice. And as well, I've loved to diversify myself and get involved in as many other areas as possible simultaneously. Also participating in business areas such as DECA, which is a competition in which we simulate a business environment and go to competitions uh, to simulate um, interviews and things like that, as well as the debate and public speaking uh, clubs. I've been a part of those since grade nine and I've gone to provincial and national competitions for those. And in terms of community service, I've done my most uh, to be able to uh, better the community here, both at Villanova College and outside of the school. And in terms of universities, I'm hoping to get into health science uh, for my undergraduate degree with the intent of eventually going to medical school. So yeah. All right, thank you. Um, hi everyone, I'm Catherine. I'm a grade 12 student. I came to the school when I was in grade eight and over my time here, just like everyone else you heard from, I've been very involved. Um, I've been very involved in the arts program this year. I'm the arts representative on the, our school's first ever Knights Council. Um, I also like to get involved in sports. So I'm, I played on the field hockey team for multiple years and I was also on the track and field team. Um, I'm also like to get involved in outreach. Recently, just this past week, I actually was one of the leaders of our International Women's Day campaign. Um, and so, yeah, I try to get involved in a lot of quite a range of things. And over my time here, I've taken quite um, a range of courses. And so for university, I'm hoping to do a double major between computer science and business. All right, thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Alexander and I'm currently in grade 11 at Villanova. I've been here since grade five and I'm actually the sports representative, a part of our Knights Council group. Um, I've been involved in, of course, many sports uh, from football to soccer, basketball. I've won quite a bit of championships here at BC, which was a great experience. But besides sports, I've also been involved in a lot of musical bands. Um, stage band, intermediate band, uh, senior band, and I'm also a percussion. Um, I'm also a percussionist, sorry, as well, um, going into the future for university choices and my, further my education. I'm looking to go into business and hopefully get my master's degree in business administration. Thank you. Amazing. So as you can see, these students are very involved and um, very ambitious. So thank you all for the, the nice warm introduction. Um, so before we get into their specific questions, we can't have a presentation or a talk without talking about COVID-19. So this is something that obviously everyone in the world knows about um, and a lot of schools are dealing with it differently. Um, and um, I'm gonna just leave it to Mrs. Gray, to Jennifer Gray to talk about how the school has been combating COVID-19 um, and how the schedule has changed. And um, yeah, just to give kind of a brief overview of how Villanova College is dealing with the pandemic. Certainly, thank you so much, Ryan. Um, yes, being um, part of this global pandemic has certainly been uh, a challenge uh, for all schools around the world, but I feel very proud of the way in which Villanova College has ensured a strong continuum of learning for our students. So I am pleased to report that our classrooms, uh, despite this global pandemic, are still full of life and full of learning. We, of course, at the school have had to do this very carefully and spent lots of time during the summer planning uh, the return to school. We follow our public health guidelines very carefully and our school nurse is in contact with the public health agencies on a daily basis. So in terms of uh, changing uh, when we came back to school in September, we thought about how um, we could keep our students engaged in the learning, but also see that they would be safe and healthy. 
So we cohorted our students, meaning that we kept them in grades. So certain students have certain areas of the school where they go each and every day to learn. What that means is our students are not interacting as much in the hallways, but it was more important to have designated zones for learning to ensure that the students were safe and they weren't crossing each other unnecessarily. Within the classrooms, we ensured our students and the teachers have the proper distance between the learning spaces so they can each be seated at their desk with the proper space and still be comfortable learning. Our timetable also adjusted to see that our students could move easily from in-person learning to online learning, depending on the needs that arose throughout the year. So we did uh, modify the timetable to see that there were four classes taught each day on a day one, day two weekly schedule. We also had to adjust our uniform, ensuring that our students were dressed each and every day in clothing that could be easily and carefully laundered. Our lunch program also adjusted. We weren't gathering in large groups in the cafeteria to enjoy lunch together, but instead a healthy lunch was delivered to the classrooms to our students. We do have a virtual online program that does allow our students to easily move between the school and at home learning, depending on the needs that may arise. All of our students are required to wear masks while in the school, as well as our staff, to ensure that each staff and student is kept safe. We also enhanced our cleaning protocols to ensure that high touch surfaces, as well as commonly shared areas, were being sanitized on a regular basis. Our hallway traffic and signage was also put into place, again, to ensure the health and safety of all. So again, I'm very proud to say Villanova College took the COVID pandemic very seriously, and we were able to continue in-person learning for our students. Great, thank you so much, Jennifer. Um, it's very helpful and it's a good uh, way to kind of see how the school is combating it and how they continue to deal with it. Um, and I know that's a serious concern for many people. Um, also, for all of those listening, if you guys have any questions, be sure to write them in the Q&A box at the bottom, um, and we'll address questions at the end. Um, so first of all, we're going to go now to the STEM program at Villanova College. So that was mentioned in the video. It's an exclusive four-year application-based STEM enrichment program, and it's specifically created for students with a strong interest in math, science, engineering, mathematics. Um, so Krishma, I know that you had mentioned that you're in the STEM program. Um, can you explain kind of an overview of what that entails? Like how, what's your schedule like and how is your schedule different from students that are not in the STEM program? Yeah, for sure. So one thing about STEM that I really like is it kind of prepares you very well for your grade 12 year, I guess you could say. So in grade nine, we just take the regular courses. So it would just be grade nine math, grade nine science, and then the regular, um, you know, English, geography, those kinds of courses. But then in grade 10, we do something different. So we allow for um, the STEM students to take two blocks of math, which allows us to finish grade 10 math in the first half of the year and grade 11 math in the second half of the year. So that by grade 11, we're taking grade 12 math. And then in grade 12, we're taking um, AP calculus. So that like the way it's um, like worked out and the way it's all planned out makes it a lot easier for us so that we can schedule our times properly in the, in the older grades. Um, but one thing that I would say is that if you're debating between non-STEM and STEM, but both would still, you're still both interested in sciences, I wouldn't say it's that different because you would be taking the same courses either way. The only thing that's different really is that in STEM, it's mandatory to take AP classes, whereas if you're out of STEM, it's not mandatory. Um, Jake, would you like to add anything? Yeah, for sure. I, I feel like you summed it up really well, Karishma. I just wanted to add a little bit about how the courses run as opposed to 
the regular courses. So in STEM, I find we do a lot more hands-on work, a lot more extensions in terms of the types of labs we do, the types of projects that we do. So for example, um, even before STEM, well, when we're in the middle school, I know during my experience at Villanova in grade seven, we actually had a project uh, to introduce students to STEM concepts where we had to design a bridge online to hold a certain amount of weight. And then we were able uh, to build it in real life and test it and actually send it to a competition with the rest of the conference of independent schools. So those are just private schools around the greater Toronto area. And so that was a great, you know, segue or introduction into the program and what it entails. And it, it hardly stopped there. Once we were in grade nine, we were able to use robotics. We were able to use different computer softwares to help with programming of things, um, with just a lot more hands-on work that shows you the uh, true capabilities that the science and technology field has today. And so if you're, if you're interested in that type of thing, by all means, STEM is a great program. And that's also to say that even if you're not interested in the engineering side of things, there's also a lot of different opportunities that don't involve the, the more engineering robotics thing, but there's also different opportunities in biology in chemistry. And it, it basically offers just a very holistic and well-rounded uh, approach to all the sciences. So I would definitely recommend it. Perfect, thank you so much, you two. Um, yeah, so the, I know that the STEM program is very advanced. Um, and it's perfect for people or students that are interested in the math sciences. But Villanova College does offer a lot of different types of courses as well, um, outside of the math and sciences um, that are available to students that really aren't offered at many normal high schools or regular high schools. So um, Catherine, I know that you're um, involved or you take a lot of different type of courses. Can you talk about some of the courses that you take that aren't um, you know, the typical courses that uh, math, science, or English, um, and your experience with those classes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the first thing is I would definitely encourage you to try and take like, a bunch of different courses and find where your interest is. And that's what I did. Um, so in grade 11, I took um, ComTech, SAP, and Spanish. Um, so I'll kind of give you a brief introduction of what those courses are. So ComTech is a technology course that focuses um, more on the visual of technology, like creating like iMovie or creating um, like pictures that have been like photoshopped or edited like that. So if you're into the visual media side of technology, that was a really, really cool course to take. It was a lot of hands-on learning. You know, you had a, um, a Mac desktop that you would work on that would be save all your files on. And um, it was just fun creating a bunch of cool different projects. And there's a lot of freedom to create um, really whatever you want. In the Spanish course, um, we learned how to speak Spanish. Um, there was uh, a lot of like cool um, projects that we did. Um, we had a guacamole making co competition, um, which was really fun. Uh, and we all, we, at the end of your project, we all studied um, one country, um, one Spanish speaking country and did a presentation. Um, so it's definitely an opportunity um, to really learn a lot. Um, and it was, a really fun course. And then SAP, it stands for Sociology, Anthropology, and Psychology, um, which I think is not typically courses that you take in high school. And um, I really love that course. Um, there was a lot of open discussions, you know, and there were a lot of, you know, really interesting, um, you know, you learn about how the human brain works and um, how people interact with each other and a history of humans. There was a lot of interesting stuff that you don't really talk about in other courses. Um, so yeah. That's great. That's That sounds very interesting. And I know, AK, you take different courses as well. I know that you're taking a log course. Um, can you talk about that course and other different courses that um, you find unique and interesting? Yeah, sure. So like Kate, I also took SAP in grade 11. And grade 11 is the year where your course load is really, really opens up. And you can start to diversify your courses like what Kate did, or you can start to really narrow in if you know exactly what you want to do. So in grade 11, another one of the courses I took was law. So in grade 11, so law is a grade 11 and 12 course. So in grade 11, you focus more on Canadian law and just how the law works. You learn about rights and freedoms. So you have a unit dedicated to the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which is Canada's constitution. 
So you focus mainly on Canadian law all throughout, but you also focus on different aspects that you can learn about civil versus common law. You can learn about criminal law, things like that. In grade 12, you start to focus more on international law. So you start to focus on not only laws in Canada, but laws in other countries. You start to learn more about the United Nations constitution. And then that grade 12 law, which is another course I'm taking this year, it's really, really different than what I expected going into the year. Because not only do you talk about law, but because law is so tied closely with morality and ethics, you also end up learning a lot about morality, ethics, and philosophy. And then in the same vein as philosophy, I'm also taking the philosophy course, which is one of your three credits that you can have in grade 12 for your religion credit. So every year you're in high school, you have to take a religion course. But in so from grade nine and 10, you have to take just a simple church course about the Catholic church. But in grade 11, you take world religions. So you learn about Christianity, Islam, uh, Hinduism, and Buddhism. But then in grade 12, you can take another church course, which would focus more on the Catholic church again. You can take a philosophy course, which would just go through different philosophers and different philosophies, which is a course I'm taking. Or you can take a Christian leadership class, which is a course that you would have to apply for. And the people who are in the leadership class, they end up running most of the initiatives throughout the entire school year. And then they also have things such as prayer services to run. Wonderful, that is great. Um, also, I just wanna know, and if you guys can raise your hand and I can call on you as far as talking about, you know, one thing that's really special about Villanova College is the class size. Um, you know, in the video I mentioned the um, faculty to student ratio is one to eight. So the class sizes are really small. Why do you benefit from small classes, do you think? Yeah, Catherine. Um, I really benefit because I feel like there's a lot of, you know, attention, like personal one-on-one -on -one help from the teachers. If I'm struggling in a course, um, I feel like there's a lot of, during class time, they can help me personally to whatever my struggle is. Whereas if you have, you know, a really big class size, there's less direct one-on-one -on -one attention from the teacher. So. Okay, wonderful. Alex, did you want to say something? Yeah, kind of to go off what Kate said, uh, mainly is just the one on one, which I really find is a big help for me personally. Um, you know, like, I think my biggest class is not even like 16 people. And just that alone, like to ask questions, I would find a lot easier. And to get extra help is just, it's a it's a big change. Yeah, that's wonderful. Anybody else want to add anything to that to the, the value of the small class size? Okay. And then we'll go to Jake after you. So one of the things that I also really like about having a small class size is that the community aspect within the class is just the entire class becomes really close throughout the year because most classes are between like say, let's say Alex said, like in mostly between like 13 to 20 people, everyone in the class becomes really close. And it also like the teacher is also really involved in that. So everybody in the class, like we really do become friends throughout the year. Great, wonderful. And Jake? Yeah, to echo what everyone else has already said, uh, coming from a public school, I went to Kleinberg Public School in grades five and six, and coming to Villanova was a, a big shift, mostly because of this class size. Back when I was uh, in the younger grades, I had 35 kids in some of my classes, and I was essentially cut in half in all of the classes here at VC. And so I noticed a really big difference, not only in the participation in the class, but also even in my marks from my first year uh, at VC, uh, as opposed to my, my years at public school, just because I was able to get so much more help, so much more one-on-one -on -one time to, to converse with the teacher and tell me how I could really improve. And so I noticed a, a really big difference in just how much uh, effort I was able to dedicate to, to every class and just that, yeah, like AK said, that community feel. Okay, wonderful, that is great. Um, so I know that, you know, as far as like the community at Villanova College, it's super important, I think, the small class size certainly helps with that because you really get to know your classmates, your teachers well. Um, and I know, uh, you know, kind of outside the classroom, more than about 80% of the students are involved in extracurricular activities, you know, whether it's a sport or a club. Um, let's focus on the sports right now. Um, Alex, I know that you're the big sports guy. Um, and can you tell us, first of all, what your involvement in sports is? I know that I, I, it's a different title than a captain, but can you kind of explain your role and how sports has really helped you grow as a person at Villanova College? Of course. So yeah, um, to go off my position, I'm the athletics representative. And basically what my job is, is well, to help 
my friends, my student, the peers, everyone around me, just to see what what athletic sport they're interested in and what maybe we'd like to change about these athletics and to just talk with the athletic group at VC and see what we can change and what to make better throughout the seasons of sports. Um, and I got to say, though, like sports has really helped me throughout my time here at VC. Uh, ever since I got to the school in grade five, I mean, the first thing I did was I looked at the gym and I was like, wow, when can I start? It's nice. It's <laughs> yeah. So um, I started off playing basketball, which was a big, uh, which was really fun for me. Uh, we won probably like, I want to say I won three championships all back to back. Uh, AK involved in that. And uh, as well, uh, coming to the sports fields, such as the turf field, playing football. Football, I feel like was probably the biggest community feel I've had at BC. Um, I've gotten close with so many of my teammates in school and outside of school just from playing football together and sharing that experience was just a wonderful time. And I feel like BC, besides the whole academic field, sports is just a big impact to our community. Wonderful, wonderful. And AKA, you play sports too, right? Yeah, so the most sport, the sport I've put the most time into at VC has been basketball. So I've been on the basketball team every year since grade five. And just to echo what Alex said, like, so my, I had an older brother who was going to Villanova before I came and he was also a basketball player. So the first time I came to watch one of their home games and they were playing on the full length court, like I was just like absolutely like blown away by it. And I was really, really excited. So like one day play there and obviously I got the chance to. And the same thing that Alex said, like, um, the community aspect is really like it's a, something amazing, especially on a sports team, right? Because at the end of the day, like you guys go through so many ups and downs together. So it really creates a community bond. The best thing that's happened in terms of sports has been in my grade 10 and 11 year, the senior basketball team was lucky enough to go to OFSA, which is basically our provincial tournament. So we go to, so we go to a city, it's a couple hours away from our school. So last year we went to North Bay and you stay at a hotel for two or three days, depending on how you do during the tournament. And then the entire time is just you, your team, and your coach. So everybody gets really close. You guys all get to hang out with each other just outside of school. You don't have to think about school. Like all you do is just think about your sport, you play your sport. And at the end of the day, everybody's there for a reason because they all love it. So everybody always has fun. Wonderful, wonderful. And so I know also, um, you know, if, if you're not into sports or if you know, you, you're not so into athletics, there's, so, there's a large number of clubs that you can join to be involved, to stay active. Um, Jake, can you kind of talk about the clubs at Villanova College, um, you know, how you're involved and how that's helped you kind of flourish as a person? Yeah, definitely. Um, so like, like Mr. Dugan said, uh, there are so many clubs here at VC that honestly, once you, once you step through the walls of our school, you won't know where to start. And I kind of felt that way as, as soon as I got there. And honestly, it leads to you wanting to, to put your share of time into as many things as possible, which is, which is what I did. And I'll never forget something that our headmaster told us on the first day of grade nine, which was in order to make the most of your experience here at VC, you have to get involved. And that's, that, that's what I've uh, attempted to, to live by uh, during my experience here. And uh, there are so many different departments that you can get involved in. Firstly, uh, I'm a little biased to talk about the STEM program and what you can get involved in there. So there's a lot of um, after school applications. There's robotics clubs that you can be a part of. There's something known as the Villanova electric car, which was a project that physics students did to build our own fully functioning electric car to compete in various university competitions. And so that was a, a really great application. It uh, provided a lot of teamwork. And there were also a lot of different applications for that. You could either race the car or look into statistics or do designs. So it was, it was a great experience for me there. But beyond the STEM program, there, there are so many others. For example, uh, since we're a very religious school, there's also something known as SAVI, which is the Student Augustinian Values Institute. And that's how we uh, attempt to you know, bring religion into every part of our life. And uh, pre-COVID, obviously, there, we, we would do retreats to other schools around the United States where six SAVI students would get selected to go to another school in the United States for a weekend and spend time with other Augustinian students from around the country. Um, there's also, uh, like I mentioned before, debates, there's public speaking, there's also business uh, applications like DECA, like I said. Um, 
And then there's many other things. There's computer programming, there's Reach for the Top, which is a trivia club that I've been part of since grade nine. There's organizing committees for things like semi-formal, which is our annual um, you know, formal dance. There's also law applications, which are, uh, for example, the charter challenge where students go into simulations about law. And then there's also different uh, community service opportunities, including sandwich patrol, where we bring around um, clothes and warm, uh, warm clothing and food to uh, individuals, uh, homeless individuals around Toronto in the winter months. And so that's a really refreshing and you know, humbling experience for a lot of people. And there's also various other retreats that you can get involved in. So that's that's barely scratching the surface. There's so much, so much. Right. We could have a whole presentation about the clubs <laughs> and the STEM program and yeah. everything. So you guys are doing a wonderful job at giving an overview of this, um, which brings me to the next subject of student support. So at Villanova College, there's a lot of support um, structure programs in place to help them academically. Um, I, I, it was mentioned in the video of the tutorial program um, and how that really is helpful to students who need extra help in certain subjects. And this is an after school program that is utilized by almost 90% of the students. Um, Karishma, can you give us, a, can you talk about the tutorial program, um, how it benefits you and other students at Villanova College? Yeah, for sure. So. Our school day generally ends at 2.40. So the after school programs all start between three to four usually. So tutorial is from three to four where every teacher basically stays in their classroom. And as students, we are open and welcome to walk into any one of the classrooms and um, either do some homework. If you, need, if you need help with an assignment, you can go there and get help with an assignment. If you need extra help with a with a, like a concept that you're kind of struggling with and didn't want to ask it in front of your whole class. So you go to tutorial and you help, um, you get help from the teachers there. Like it's, it's sometimes mandatory. So let's say like you, um, you missed a, a school day or wh whatever, and the teacher will ask you to come by and like figure out what you missed. Or if you're like struggling with a concept, they'll ask you to come by and, you know, we'll figure it out together. Or it's optional, which um, I always go to tutorial after school because my mom can't pick me up right at 2.40. So I'm always in one of the classrooms doing homework, you know, talking to the teacher, hanging out with friends and like figuring out problems. Like I love tutorials. It's so fun. I remember this one time last year for chemistry, like all of us were in the room trying to figure out WebAssign which is like an assignment a assignment thing that we all do. And there were older students there helping us with some of those concepts. There were the teacher obviously helping us with the concepts. We were on the board doing stuff. And it was just such a, like, it was so fun. Like, I don't know, I love like challenge and it was just really, really fun. So it's, it's not like a, oh, it's a school thing and it's gonna be hard and it's like awkward. And no, it's like really open. The teachers are so wanting to help you. They really want us to be successful. So. They're like everyone said, like the teachers are just so great and they really do like make sure you understand the concept. So tutorials are, are amazing. I love them. Um, one other thing that we have at our school is um, an advisor program. So when you go into the school, um, mostly, so it's, it starts in grade nine. So as you enter grade nine, you're put in a set of students gender base. So the females are together and males are together. And there is around 10 people in the group paired with a teacher. And it's kind of like your homeroom. Um, and every Thursday you meet together. Sometimes we have snacks and we just hang out, catch up and just have a little support system. We can go to the teacher and, you know, talk to them about anything we have that's on our mind or um, talk to the students there. And that's kind of where I found my friends. So I started in grade nine and basically the whole advisor group is, Kate's is part of my advisor group. Like we're all like, that's like how I found my friends. And it was just so, it felt so like comfortable because I was new to the school and I was kind of scared, obviously like anyone else. And the advisor program is just such a good home base and you're always with those group of people and, you know, we always support each other. So yeah, that's another one of our support systems here. Wonderful. And just a follow up question on that, Krishma, how do you think that would benefit or how do you think that has benefited international students that are new to the school? Yeah, so our international students um, are also part of our advisor program. So in our ours, we have two international students, 
Becky in spring. And, you know, we always talk to them. If we see them in the halls, like we always say, hi, we help them with homework. If they're in one of our classes, like it's great for them because they know people outside of the international program, um, which I, I think, I mean, I'm not an international student, so I can't really speak for them, but I, I really do think that they're not secluded in classes. Like you'll, like everyone talks to everyone and we, it's not like international students and then like Canadian students. We're all like, we all talk to each other. We all help each other. And I think the advisor program really helps with that because the international students integrate with the Canadian students. Wonderful. Does anyone want to follow up on that? And you know, to add on how the teacher advisory program, because I think that's such a special program and unique to Villanova College. And I think it is something that does benefit international students. So Catherine, do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, so as um, Krishma said, I'm, I was part of her group. And honestly, I, that our advisor group is so close, everyone. And as she said, we have two international students part of that part of our advisor group um, and we talk to them regularly, you know, and it doesn't feel like there's any, you know, separation there, you know, it's a really close group. Um, and it's just, it's so easy to, you know, when you're new, it can be really intimidating, you know, to make friends. I know that, especially for me, when I went into, like I came to the school in a non-entry year, I was one of the only new students and um, the advisor group definitely, you know, they started conversations, honest conversations, you know, we had like shared funny moments and stuff. And it's just, it's a break, it's outside of your academics, just really a focused time to just get to know everyone. And um, honestly, I'm so grateful for it because my best friends are in my advisor group, so. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Anyone want to add anything to that before we move on to the next subject? Jake. Yeah, like to echo again what Kate and Krishma said, there's a, a special relationship that you build with the teacher that is your advisor for the four years. Um, so once you get to the school in grade nine, you get your advisor and it stays constant. The group of people also stays constant for the entire four years. And so like it, it's, it's really some sort of a small family that you build there, especially not only with the students, but like I said, the teacher actually becomes not on the same level as a student, obviously, but they become someone that you can talk to about anything. I know myself and my advisor, he's actually my calculus teacher this year. And so there's been various times where even after class, I've stayed for a couple minutes to talk to him about something that's going on in my life or anything that I feel is necessary to, to talk to him about. And it's, it's just been great with, you know, having that friendly face in the hallway, being able to, to pass by them and know that you can confide in them with anything. And so honestly, it's, it's really helped my experience here. And it's, it's helped to know that you, you have a support system, especially with one of the teachers who have the authority at the school. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, in, in addition to, you know, the support that you receive, you also, all of you in grade 11 are assigned to a senior level advisor. Right, that kind of helps you with the um, university application process and so forth. Um, back to you, Catherine. Can you kind of talk us talk us through um, that that relationship with your advisor um, and how they kind of steer you in the direction of being admitted to top notch universities within Canada or the United States? Yeah, absolutely. So I mentioned this um, earlier that I had like in grade nine, you know, entering high school, I had, I had no idea what I wanted to go into. Um, I was- And that's okay, by yeah. the way. <laughs> <laughs> and it is okay. Um, I'm honestly really grateful for that because as I mentioned in grade 11, I took a lot of courses that were just from all these different subject areas. Um, and one of the courses that I didn't mention, I took computer science, um, which is what, as I said, I wanted to go into. So. I really loved math in grade 10. Um, I was part of the STEM program, but I wasn't super interested in, you know, the natural sciences like physics and chemistry and stuff. Um, and so I spoke to my guidance counselor and I said, like, I don't like, I love math. I don't know what, what careers I have, what options I have. And she said, try some computer courses, take computer science. Um, and so I took it and I fell in love. I honestly code in my spare time now. <laughs> um, and I found this passion through that. So they're really, they really listen to you, you know, see what your interests are and, you know, with their, you know, experience and their knowledge that you don't have as a student, you know, at, like you're in high school, right? They give you that knowledge to say, these are some career potential options for you. 
Um, and so from that, for my university like applications, um, I had many meetings with her where she sat down with me and she said, these are, you know, top notch schools, you know, this is like, you should always have like a safety school and kind of really talked through this really overwhelming process. It can be super overwhelming, but at Villanova, honestly, it didn't feel as overwhelming as I thought it would be. And she really um, broke it down for me. I'm hoping to go to Waterloo computer science program, which is um, ranks really high in the world. That's I think good. it's like yeah, 20 to 25 or something in the world for computer science. Um, and I also like business. And she showed me this double major program that I'm really, really interested in with the Waterloo computer science program. So it calms your nerves. This, the guidance counselors, they really know, you know, what they're talking about. You know, they really know what are the good programs out there and what will be something that's a good fit for you and for your interests. That's wonderful. And I, I just want for everyone listening to know that 98% of the students of the graduates at Villanova College are accepted into the school of their first choice and major. Um, and I think that, I mean, it's obviously you guys are doing the work and you know, it's you, but I think that because of these support structures like the advising program is wonderful, you know, so they get you right away. And that's why Villanova College is a prep, it's a university preparatory school. That's what it's aimed to do. And um, on average, you know, students have, you know, are accepted to eight schools. Um, so, you know, they take this very seriously and they start them early, which is great. Okay, thank you. So first of all, I, I want to take them, we'll get out of academics and really quick before, you know, I know time is wrapping up. We have 10 minutes left. There are some questions that have come through and we do want to address them. One thing that I want to give everyone a sense of is, where this school is located. Um, obviously, you know, students are coming from, you know, international students are coming from Mexico, from Colombia, from Brazil, from Spain, um, and Canada is foreign to them. You know, Ontario is foreign to them, Toronto is. Um, Alex, can you kind of describe the school setting and where it is and um, maybe how, you don't have to tell us your address, don't tell us any personal information, but how far do you live from the school, for instance? Yeah, no problem. So I live um, in a city called Vaughan, which is really right beside uh, Villanova College and Villanova is located in King City. And uh, it's all under the same region, which is called York Region. And for me going to school, I used to take the bus to school and it took me about uh, 25 minutes, it wasn't very long. And uh, now driving to school it takes me 20, 20 to 25 minutes, still pretty much the same time. Um, it's honestly the even just driving to school gives me some sort of motivation in the morning just seeing like the sun the so much green land around me it's just it's a great setting to see and um the campus at vc is pretty big uh compared to king city i would say like there's uh the town of king city and there's a lot of restaurants um a lot of boutique stores and then right coming out of there you go up straight for what, two minutes and then you're at the VC campus. So it's a great location because I know like even sometimes after exams in the summer, a lot of me and my friends would even walk from the school campus to the town of King City and maybe grab a bite for lunch and yeah. Wonderful. And AK, can you tell us to, like how often do you go into Toronto? Is that something that you do regularly? How do you get? into Toronto? Is it quick? Can you kind of, because a lot of these international students come from big cities, you know, so they're maybe used to big city life. Um, can you give us a sense of how easy and accessible Toronto, which is the biggest city in Canada, one of the biggest in North America, actually, and just tell us how accessible the city is? Yeah, for sure. So in terms of Toronto itself, Toronto's, like you said, it's a really big city. So there are different areas of Toronto you can go to. If you're assuming, I guess you guys are most likely talking about downtown Toronto. From Villanova, downtown Toronto is maybe about 40, 45 minutes. Uh, I used to go downtown a lot to play uh, basketball games for the school because a lot of schools, that a lot of CIS schools that we play against are located in downtown Toronto. Like I think it's about four or five. So I used to go down there fairly often. Uh, from where I live, which, is, which is, is an area called Woodbridge, which is about 20 minutes from the school, Going downtown, you can either drive there, you can just take the highway, or you can take back roads. 
you can take the GO train or you can take something called the TTC, which is basically just our subway system. If you take the TTC, obviously there's not traffic to worry about or anything like that. If you take the TTC, it's probably about 30 minutes to get downtown. And then once you get to downtown Toronto, like it's so much fun. There's so much stuff to do. Like there's so many different areas and you could really spend like an entire day just exploring downtown. So the I wonderful think that's city. Yeah. yeah. It's like really like if you want to go downtown, you can get there really easily. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. You guys have been wonderful. I'm going to address some of the questions that have come through from the audience. Um, so you guys can raise your hands if you you know want to answer it. If you all raise your hands, I'll, I'll call on one of you. Um, the first is, um, why do you want to study with international students? Okay. So one of the reasons why I want to study with international students is that once upon a time, like a really long time ago, I was actually an international student because I moved here from Nigeria when I was six years old, but I obviously I wasn't at Villanova yet. So I, I kind of know what it feels like to be moving to a new country where you might not know a lot of people and then going to a new school where it's kind of like, it's almost a cult, it's almost like a culture shock if you're not like already well-versed in the people's culture. But I think that one of the reasons why I want to study with international students so much is because I just think it's really interesting to one meet new people from different places so you can really diversify your worldview because I think when you meet people from like a really different place or culture than from you then like you really get a better sense of how like what type of place the world is and I like I said before like it's really just interesting learning about other people's cultures so like for me like when I first moved to Canada like learning about not only Canadian culture but then like a lot of people that I went to school with in my elementary school were from different parts of Asia or Africa so learning about different cultures like Europe too. And obviously moving to Villanova, that stayed the same. There's a lot of Italians at Villanova. So you learn a lot about Italian culture as well, but it's also like other different cultures. So it's always just really interesting. It's always like a learning experience. Wonderful. Okay, another question we have is, what advice would you give to a student that is new to VC uh, to make the most of his or her experience? Krishma. Sorry, I had to choose one of you guys. <laughs> Sorry, Kate. Um, one, so I'm honestly, I'm not really a sporty person, but I would, I kind of regret not um, trying, just trying out for a sports team in grade nine. Like, honestly, it's like one of my biggest regrets because looking at the sports teams here, like they're like so cool. They're they such a cool team. And I don't know, I just really wish- Like I Alex, Alex is a cool guy, right? Yeah, like, like <laughs> I just see the field hockey team, for example. And I'm like, oh my God, I wish I was part of that. Um, so I would just like take risks, go for it and don't worry about what other people think of you because like, yes. who the hell, who cares? Sorry. Sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> who cares? Okay. Like just like take risks. Uh, that's my biggest. Um, Put yourself out there. So I think yeah. that's another question that we have, which ties into that. Thank you, Krishna. That was well said very passionately too. Um, and maybe this is a good question for Alex, as far as international students playing sports, is that something that you see? Um, and is that something that they, that you recommend for them? Yes, so uh, when coming to international students playing athletics and sports here, I'd say it, there, there are quite a few that do sort of get involved with sports, um, not as much as I'd like, I'd say, and I really would, um, you know, recommend students who are international to come here and play sports because it really helps your community sense of the school. Just aside from the academic uh, side of VC, it really allows you to connect with more of the students who are here and uh, create a, a community sense. And I think that it's also really cool to see international students and show their different styles of athleticism, how they were brought up playing certain sports, and it really helps um, contribute to the teams. Okay, great. And I'll leave this question, the last one, to both Catherine and Jake for you guys, for you know, all you guys to have one last say before we sign off here. Um, what, you know, what was one of the main reasons that you and your family decided on Villanova College? You know, I know that, you know, the whole process of finding a, a private high school, especially for your parents, maybe not so much for you, but I'm sure that you had a say and you had your opinions. Um, what, what do you think was maybe the biggest reason you chose Villanova College? We can start with you, Catherine, first, and then we can go to you, Jake. Um, yeah, so um, 
So my parents initially wanted to switch me for grade nine, for my grade nine year. Um, and we started looking at schools really early on towards the end of my grade seven year. Um, and we looked at a few schools and we were still, you know, ready to go for grade nine. And we came to Villanova and we just fell in love. And I'm being quite honest here. Um, we, I love the community. I, I did a shadow day. So I, um, I sat in a class and I just did a day in the life of a VC student. Um, and it was just, it was just amazing. Like I, I met so many people, you know, and everyone was just so welcoming. The teachers, um, were just so nice. Um, I loved the facilities too. They were so beautiful. Um, I also saw a sports practice actually. Um, I've been playing field hockey since I was in grade six. Um, and I saw a field, a field hockey practice and I was just so excited to, um, to join that team. And, and so we decided to just go a year early and throw caution to the wind. <laughs> and, um, and I've been really happy with that choice. So. Amazing, amazing. And Jake. Yeah, last but not least. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my experience is kind of similar to that of Kate's. Um, it differs slightly, though, in the fact that I had actually hoped to come to the school in grade five. Um, my parents, I had been to private school for most of my life, and my parents wanted to continue with that. But uh, what had happened is we had just moved uh, houses. We moved to this this uh, small town called Kleinberg. And so they decided to send me to this to the local public school, uh, like I had said my experience at public school for those two years, because my sister was going there and they, she was younger at the time. So we wanted to keep uh, it constant there. But before in, in grade four, uh, leading up to the year, I had done a couple tours at Villanova and I was really pushing to go there. But they said, uh, spend a couple years at public school. And so uh, once it once grade six came around, I, I had still that that image, that first image I got of Villanova never left my mind. And so I pushed harder again to, to go there and we, we did another tour. And actually on that second tour that we did uh, when I was in grade six, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the NHL, but Alex Petrangelo was there on a photo day and he's now a player on the St. Louis Blues. And so I had seen him play hockey growing up. And so it was, it was amazing seeing one of my, my idols standing there right in front of me, being able to take a picture with him. And so that's a, that's a lasting memory that I, I know for a fact that that helped to draw me to the school, but it definitely didn't stop there. There was uh, so, so many other things that were, that were great about it. Like Kate said, with that community feel, I was also able to go in and, and walk around while classes were going on. I saw how the teachers interacted with the students. I saw uh, all the different uh, extracurriculars in action as I was able to come uh, one time at the end of the day and almost every classroom that I walked past had a club in it or some sort of thing going on after school. And so I, I had loved to get involved even at my previous schools. And so seeing, seeing all of this, um, you know, really drew me here. And that this amazing uh, football field that you see behind me wasn't even there at the time. So that was just an added bonus that was added <laughs> during my time at BC. So a lot has changed, but it's still get, it's, I still have that sense of initial excitement and community that drew me there. At, in Perfect. State. That's a good mic drop moment, right? <laughs> right there. Well, I really want to thank you all. Um, you guys, you know, like, again, represent this school so well. Um, and just how mature and poised and um, articulate you are. I'm just very impressed and I'm sure everyone that's listening as well. So I, I really wanna thank you so much um, for your time. Um, you know, again, we could probably make this presentation for hours and hours because we could talk about so much. There's a lot to cover. Um, I'm going to right now um, provide my email address to everyone. So if anyone out there is interested in learning more or wants a meeting, um, a one-on-one -on -one with myself to learn more about anything um, about the school, um, please, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, and again, to the students, thank you so much. Um, you guys look stellar and I know that you guys don't have school tomorrow. So enjoy, enjoy your long, long weekend. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Ms. Gray. Thank you, Jennifer, so much.